All good things must come to an end, and in the early 1300s, the Kamakura shogunate begins to decline. This is kind of odd. There's three reasons for this. The first one is the Mongol invasions. Even though Japan was not in conquered by the Mongols, being invaded one, not once but twice in a period of 10 years really makes people question the legitimacy of the shogunate and, and the Hojo regions. How did you let this happen? Right? I thought you knew. Why didn't you stop them from coming? And the second reason is the Hojo regions did not reward the warriors who fought the Mongols. Many Japanese died during you know, fighting the Mongols who tried to invade Japan, but the Hojo regions couldn't afford to reward them. They didn't have the money to reward them. They didn't have the land to reward them with. So a lot of samurai became upset with the Hojo regions. They said, we, you know, we fought and died for you, and now you're not rewarding us anymore. What do we have to fight for? And finally, the imperial court. Uh, are, you know, they were quiet for a century or so, but now they are becoming restless again. Uh, emperor Godaigo becomes emperor in 1318, and he becomes quite tired of the Kamakura shoguns in the Hojo regions. He says, I want to get rid of them. Now I see some cracks in the foundation. <clears throat> it's a good time to get rid of them so that the imperial family can be powerful again. So Godaigo waited a little bit. He took advantage of the decline of the Kamakura shogunate and suddenly begins a rebellion in 1333. And his goal is to overthrow the Hojo regents and the Kamakura shogunate and basically return all power back to the, imper into the imperial family, to the emperor. He basically wants to take Japan back to the early Heian period. And so he begins a rebellion. The Hojo regents start to fight him again. It creates a similar situation to what Gotoba tried to do a century earlier, except unlike then, the Kamakura shogunate was not as powerful as it was at that time. So the rebellion is a little more serious than it was at that time. So when the Hojo regent, at that time his name was Takatoki, when he finds out about this rebellion by the imperial family, he sends one of his best generals, the general's name was Ashikaga Takauji, who worked for the Hojo, genius, military genius. He sends Ashikaga to go to Kyoto and punish the emperor, punish Godaigo. So Ashikaga, being a good samurai, does what he's told. He goes to Kyoto. He reaches Kyoto, and then he changes his mind. He says, I'm being told by a Hojo regent, who's really nobody, to go against the descendant of the sun goddess, to go against the kami. How can I do this? So Ashikaga meets with Emperor Godaigo. He changes sides. He betrays the Hojo regent. And now he goes back to Kamakura with his army to punish the Hojo for attempting to punish the Emperor Godaigo. After all, how could you try to go against the emperor? Ashikaga could not let it, his conscience didn't let him fight the descendant of the sun goddess. So he switches sides, he betrays the Hojo, and he goes to Kamakura with an army to punish the Hojo once and for all. And Ashikaga was a brilliant general. <coughs> uh, he was very, that's why the Hojo liked him so much, but this time Ashikaga was on the other side. So his armies completely destroy the Hojo in the Battle of Kamakura. The last Hojo regent, Takatoki, and his entire family, the entire Hojo family, commit suicide in a Buddhist temple. So the Hojo family becomes extinct, and the Kamakura shogunate ends in 1333. This officially ends the Kamakura shogunate and the Hojo regents. So this shows the Battle of, Battle of Kamakura, where Ashikaga defeats his former lord, the Hojo, and the Hojo family is no more. Uh, Kamakura was burned to the ground by Ashikaga Takauji, unfortunately. Uh, it still exists um, in Japan. You can still visit. It's very close to Tokyo, beautiful city. But for the rest of Japanese history, it was no longer the headquarters of any government and had no influence in political life. So after the end of the Kamakura shogunate, Kamakura ceases to be influential politically or economically. Okay? It goes back to being a small city with Buddhist temples, which is what it's still famous for today. Okay? So the Hojo regents are no more. Okay? The Kamakura shogunate is no more. And so the center of political power goes back to the capital city of Kyoto. Remember, Kyoto had been the capital all along. Kamakura was just the political headquarters of the country. But now that the Kamakura shogunate is no more, the center of political power shifts back to 
Kyoto. So Emperor Godaigo says thank you to Ashikaga, but he says, you know, I'm not going to bring the samurai into the government. I'm going to be a dictator. I want imperial power all for myself and the imperial family, just like how Japan was run during the Nara and early Heian periods. So what does he do? He ignores the warrior class, and he wants the imperial family to own all the land in the country again, which is kind of what was happening during the Nara period, right? So he basically tries to ignore the samurai class, which had been ruling Japan for over a century. You just can't ignore them, right? So one of Godaigo's advisors, who was a samurai, Kusunoki Masashige, he tries to stop Godaigo. He says, you know what? You can't do this because you're going to make all the samurai in Japan upset, and you don't want them... Uh, you know, against you. The Emperor Godaigo ignores him. He says, no, I don't need the samurai. Who are they? I'm the emperor. I can do whatever I want. And Kusunoki is a very loyal advisor. He cannot criticize. He refuses to criticize Godaigo. So when Ashikaga Takauji found, finds out about Godaigo ignoring the samurai, he is furious. Okay, He says, I went and fought for you like a sucker and I defeated my former lord, and now you're going to ignore me and disrespect me? We're not having that. So three years later, in 1336, uh, Ashikaga and his army rebel against the emperor, rebel against Godaigo, and Godaigo sends his samurai advisor, Kusunoki Masashige, to stop him. So Kusunoki tries to be the good guy and um, mediate between the two. He doesn't want to be caught in the middle, but he's trying to help Godaigo, he's trying to help uh, Ashikaga, but nobody would compromise. They're both very stubborn. And essentially, Ashikaga Takauji was so powerful that he easily defeats Emperor Godaigo's forces. The rebellion is put down. Um, Godaigo's dream of becoming an absolute monarch is put down. And uh, because Godaigo's forces were defeated, Kusunoki, who was so loyal to his emperor, commits suicide after sustaining some wounds in battle. This is an image of Kusunoki attacking you know, Ashikaga to save the honor of the emperor. And in this picture, he's basically telling his young son that he will be committing suicide because he, they lost against Ashikaga. And out of honor for the emperor, he will commit suicide. So Kusunoki was actually hailed as a martyr later for the imperial family, and his statue also stands outside the imperial palace because of his loyalty to the emperor, Godaigo. So Ashikaga has defeated Godaigo, and uh, Godaigo is exiled to a distant island far away. Uh, remember, the imperial family cannot be harmed, so he's just exiled to a faraway island. And um, Ashikaga Takauji declares himself as shogun in 1336, okay? And this begins the Muromachi period of Japanese history, 1333 to 1573, okay? So Ashikaga is shogun. He creates a new dynasty of shoguns, the Ashikaga shogunate, okay? We still have to have an imperial family, but because Godaigo is gone, the uh, Ashikaga shogun, Takauji, decides that Godaigo's cousin, Emperor Komyo, will be the next emperor. So instead of going to Godaigo's son, Takauji forces Godaigo's cousin, Komyo, to become the emperor. What do you think Godaigo's son and his descendants are going to do? They say, why is a cousin going to become emperor? He's still the member of the same family, yes. But why do I, you know, why can't we become emperor? We're the son, we're closer, you know, we're closer in lineage to Emperor Godaigo. So they insist that they should be emperor, and so they, when Komyo is forced to become emperor in Kyoto, Godaigo's son leaves Kyoto, and they go to a small city near Nara known as Yoshino, and they form something called the Southern Court. Okay, So they say, we are the real imperial palace because we are the children of Godaigo and descendants of Godaigo, but it's very interesting because the legitimate emperors in Kyoto ignore them Okay, because they say, well, the shogun told us that it's our turn as cousins to become emperors, so you could say whatever you want, but we're going to ignore you, whatever you do. So during the 1300s, there's actually two imperial palaces. You have the real emperors, the legitimate emperors in Kyoto, and then Godaigo's descendants, his son and children, in near Nara, and they're called the Southern Court. So this trouble between the two courts is chronicled in a history book known as the Taiheiki, the Chronicle of 
great peace. Okay, and in this book, actually, Godaigo is seen as a victim because he, you know, even though he didn't rule wisely during the three years he was in power, he tried to be a despot. He's seen as a victim, and Ashikaga Takauji is seen as a traitor. Okay, so during this period, you have two imperial palaces. Kyoto is the legitimate emperor's, right? And the southern court are Godaigo's descendants who believe that they should have uh, real power.